Hello, Check friends. Uncle Marv here at IT Nation Live with another episode of the IT Business Podcast. And that check check you heard was a good friend, Matt Lee with Pax8 in the house, walking by. I said, man, sit. Chat. And I sat. It's been forever since it we chatted. It has been. So, uh, Probably two years, I bet, since we've been live or recorded together. Sounds about right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And actually, it was funny because I was like at another state. Yep. Oh, that's right. We Zoomed. I forgot. We, we weren't a, even in the same room, We did, we? did a Zoom. Well, here we find ourselves. And I was at a client, yeah, and that's right. uh, they had that's asked right. me to stay an extra day, and I forget where you were, but you're Who always knows? over the place. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, anything. But we're both here, live at IT Nation Secure, Orlando, Florida, the lovely Gaylord Palms Resort. Uh, day three, closing it out, man. How has it been for you? You know, this is like homecoming for me, right, Marv? Like, I was a ConnectWise shop the whole time, 11 years of it. I was presenting with Continuum and with other things. So this is like all my friends, right? These are all the, the people that I, that I know, that I respect, that I've worked with over the years. And then the other side of it is, for me, it, it's, it's always just about the conversations and, the, you know, the hallway con, if you will, right? Yeah. And um, it's just so good. I, you know, pers on a personal note, I... I'm on a mission, right? It's about raising the tide. It's about us meeting some level of cybersecurity standard. And everybody gets smarter every year and they mature. And I, ah, yeah, it's, it's been great, man, yeah. as a summarization. So I should let people know if there are people out there who don't know who you are. I mentioned you with Pax8, the Senior yeah. Director of Security and Compliance. Yes, sir. Uh, but you are known as like the most ethical of all hackers. I, that's fair, <laughs> I suppose. I don't know if that's, a, there's, there's some gray probably in there. Yeah, no, maybe. Uh, but yeah. you're all about showing us, man, this is what you got to pay attention to. This is yeah. what's happening to your networks now. Yep. Uh, fix it. Grow, or forget mature, it. <laughs> or lose it. Yeah. It's your call. Yeah, 100%. So um, now you're here in advance of next week's ah. Pax 8 Beyond. Yes, sir. Uh, which I assume that you'll be doing what multiple sessions there all yeah, of that stuff yeah i'll give you a little sneak preview maybe okay. a little bit yeah we're doing the security track is what i i own a little bit of that with uh, andrew morgan and a couple others uh and uh we've got some fun stuff cooking one of the ones that i i would hate to see people miss is we have a 7 a.m breakfast session on day two on oh, tuesday <laughs> i know but we're gonna do wrong answers only we're gonna talk about some tough topics like quantum and ai will save us Really? Or, and we're going to give wrong answers only and talk about it and bat it around. It's going to be a blast. But, yeah, I'm excited about the security track Okay. Uh, beyond. That sounds interesting. So you're going to ask a question and people have to intentionally give wrong answers? Yeah. So, for example, let's say we're talking about instead of us using MFA and strong passwords in, in that nature, maybe we're better off if we actually just stored one password and wrote it on a sticky note. And we and, and what the, the purpose of it is, is really to kind of hyperbolize and laugh about all of the, the things people have actually said, the wrong answers to things. But we're gonna have a panel of people only answering the wrong answers and arguing it for fun at 7 a.m. on the stage. Uh, and then the correct answers will be given by the venerable Wes Spencer uh, uh, as Wes we wrap Spencer. that up. So okay. it's a, it'll be a fun way to play with the problems we talk about. And some of them are salacious, like, should I use SSO versus multiple strong passwords? Those get into some things that as a security practitioner, you've heard people give arguments that I think are wrong uh, for some of those statements. And yeah. I'll, I'll let you guess which one's right uh, <laughs> when we get down the path. All right, we'll be there and do all that next week. Uh, so in terms of, well, let's, let me just ask this weird question. Passwordless. Yeah. That's the way that uh, part of our industry is pushing us. Do you yeah. think that's uh, truly going to happen? <clears throat> yes. What passwordless takes, at least in its current iterations as we think about it, is the sense of pass keys. Well, what is authentication, right? So we need to identify, authenticate, authorize, and audit. Those are I, triple A. Identify, as Marvin, got it. Yep. <laughs> he's identified. He's put in a username. He's presented himself in some way. Okay, authenticate. Well, that's where we talk about MFA. Password, something I know, something I have, something I am, those three categories of those MFA. Well, password is one of those that is something that I can take a $5 wrench and make you give it to me. When you think about what are, what are pass keys, pass keys take away that password, but bring in something that is cryptographically, must be on this phone or in this little physical device 
and now there isn't something to steal from me. I can't take that password from me. You either have to have this and be in physical possession or not. And so I think passwordless is the next extension of how we increase the capabilities of authentication, right? And is that really Marvin? Um, so yeah, I think pass keys drive forward without getting too nerdy. It also makes it very, very hard when you're using FIDO protocol or other methodologies like that to fish. I can't steal that token in the middle. It actually right. fails. And so the reduction of risk vis-a-vis -vis not having passwords and usernames as simple methodologies is huge when it comes to what the benefits of a passkey or a FIDO token or something of that nature uh, gives. All right, and then of course the next extension of that, biometrics. You know. Yeah, well biometrics already play into some form of that, right? Because when you talk about something I know, we're kind of removing that a little bit. <clears throat> Maybe there's a pin on your FIDO token, that's something you know. Removing something you know, something I have, my FIDO token, my phone, and biometrics are already part of it because it's something I am. Think about your iPhone holding your passkey yep. or your Android if you're an Android guy. But if you're looking at it, I have to show my face. I have to have my thumbprint. I have to have... So we are already mixing mixed modal types to access that, right? So I have access to the device to then give me access to the TPM. That TPM gives me access to the nonce that allows me to sign in from, from that passkey. So yes, Marvin, you're reading the, the tea leaves. We are adding more of those types of authentication um, as well um, outside of the password. And MFA doesn't say password and this and this. It just says multiple factors multiple, to determine yeah. who I am. And so it's a shift. And I could see biometrics being a part of it. There was a ring that had a FIDO token in it. And you had to put your fingerprint on it first, authenticate, and then slide the ring on. And then after that, it would always work, right? But if you took it off, it no longer works. So you're seeing biometrics be a part of a lot of these models. I've even seen methodologies where one of the passkey providers that are out there, and I won't name names, um, actually does the heuristics of how Marvin uses his phone. Like Marvin always swipes up with his right thumb halfway up the screen and then types this way. They're using those as additional biometrics to determine heuristically is that, you know, is that Marvin or not? Right. Uh, and they won't issue the passkey if it's not really Marvin. Even though they have the same phone, they have unlocked it, they have had biometrics to get there, they're saying, that's probably not Marvin. Somebody yeah. else's wife's using his phone or somebody else is using his phone. So, um, yes, thanks for getting me going. You pulled my string real good on that one, brother. Thank you. <laughs> listen, I know it's easy. I know it's easy. Um, now, listen, you got your wife, Kat, here. You guys uh, extending the stay, doing no. Disney. I mean, you guys have been here so often, right? Well, and it, it's, it's not that. It's that um, it's for me and Kat, um, it's always this to this to that to that. And so, like, we're leaving here and going to Ohio. Uh, we're going to ride a charity bike ride on Saturday for 50 miles. And then I fly in on Sunday morning to, uh, to Denver to do that. And then fly home for a magical two or three days and then do it again. <laughs> so Always yeah. on the road. Yeah. but uh, It's a mission. That's right. But uh, thank you very much for always being out there, being a champion, helping us out, uh, guiding us. Yeah, brother. In Ditto. all ways secure. So <laughs> good to run into you. And uh, I'll let you get going. Thank you, my man. And thanks for hanging out. And that's going to do it, folks. And we are done here at IT Nation. And uh, we'll see you next week at PAX 8 Beyond. And until then, holla.